Hello, good morning. Uh, today I am going to take you, uh, teach you about the topic PUO, that is the pyrexia of unknown origin. It is also known as FUO, fever of unknown origin. Fever, so first we should know what are the objectives of our lecture. Our objective of our level, first you should know what is the normal temperature of the baby at different ages? Is it, and what are the factors affecting the uh, temperature? And then how to measure the exact temperature and keep the recording? Then what are the um, causes where you cannot diagnose the cause of the fever? Then how long, if it is not diagnosed, then it is when it is labeled as pyrexia of unknown origin. And then how to investigate about it. There are three levels of investigation. So level one, level two, level three, uh, we will do. And then how to manage the pyrexia of unknown origin in the children. So first, I will tell you normal body temperature. The hypothalamus is the heat regulatory center of the body and helps in maintaining a stable body temperature. In, in children, it is higher as compared to the adults. And normal value ranges between 36.1 to 37.8 degrees centigrade. That is, in Fahrenheit, it becomes 97 to 100 degree Fahrenheit on rectal measurement. Oral temperature is around 0.4 degree and axillary temperature is about 0.5 to 1 degree below the rectal temperature. Um, there is a normal diurnal variation in body temperature. It is the lowest uh, between the midnight and 6 a.m. at maximum between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. This is known as the circadian rhythm. And this is the normal variation. Oh, fever, what is fever? Fever is a controlled increase in body temperature. The normal hypothalamic set point for an individual is over it so the, when the body temperature is over the normal hypothalamic set point for an individual then it is known as the fever fever is a symptom of an underlying disease which may be infective or non-infective so children has fever what is when the when the children we will call that he's having fever the child has fever if the rectal temperature is more than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degree centigrade or oral temperature is more than 99.5 degree Fahrenheit or 37.5 degree centigrade. Axillary temperature more than 90 degree, 99 degree Fahrenheit or 37.2 degree centigrade. Hyperpyrexia is a temperature of 40 degrees centigrade or more is termed as hyperpyrexia. Now, what is the etiopathogenesis of fever? All, I, I, as I told you, there can be a causes infective and non-infective. So, all causes of fever result in production of what is the, how this fever is caused. All causes of fever may be infective or non-infective. It is the production of endogenous pyrogens as interleukin IL-1, interleukin-6, tumor necrosing factor that is TNF-alpha, and interferon beta and delta, lipid mediators as prostaglandins E2, which alter the temperature set point of anterior hypothalamus. I told you that there is the alteration in the set point. So what, what changes the set point? These factors, they are changing the set points of the hypothalamus and leading to the elevation of body temperature. Contrast to fever, the highest body temperature uh, the high body temperature in heat illness due to the increased heat production or reduced heat loss with the hypothalamic soil set point being normal. Hence, core temperature may rise beyond 160 degree Fahrenheit. Common causes of heat illnesses are hyperthyroidism and anticholinergic phenothiazines, then heat stroke and malignant hyperthermia. Now, 
how to measure the fever so there are different types of thermometers available in the market uh, uh, first is the mercury it is the older one it is preferably only for rectal thermometers now it is not preferred then forehead strips they are also measuring inaccurately the temperature so they are not preferred then digital electronic it is the quick convenient but calibration error is there then infrared thermometers they measure the temporal uh, artery temperature and they are very quick and accurate also and close to the rectal temperature you know rectal temperature is exactly actually it is very closest to the body temperature but it is expensive so recent recommendations are neonate in neonates axillary temperature by digital thermometers more than 4 weeks the baby is after that after neonatal period axillary temperature by digital or infrared thermometer should be taken what is the uh, liber mistress rule the pulse rate rises about 15 beats per minute for each degree each centigrade rise of fever that is uh, like uh, if more uh, one degree increase in the fever then the more uh, normal temperature the your heart rate should be increased by the 15 beats then what is the relative bradycardia it is seen in enteric fever relative bradycardia means when your temperature has raised but your heart rate is not raised proportionately as it is not raised about 15 beats per minute per degree rise of temperature then it is known as the relative bradycardia and it is seen in enteric fever at uh, one h faget faget sign then factitious fever during fever drug fever then dengue fever mycoplasma pneumonia brucellosis yellow fever tubercular meningitis black water fever that is falciparum malaria with profound hemolysis so these are the causes where you can find you may have the patient may have relative bradycardia now what is the definition of pyrexia of unknown origin and its classification definition is the peterson and beeson criteria this is the definition is a uh, uh, definition that is the classical puo there are different types of pyrexia of unknown origin commonest is the classical puo and the peterson beeson criteria is the fever that is rectal temperature 38 degree centigrade or 100 100.4 degree fahrenheit it is documented by health worker health worker personnel or with which no cause is identifiable well after 3 weeks of opd evaluation or after 1 week of inpatient means if the patient is admitted and even after 1 week you all the tests are coming negative and you are not reaching the yeah. any diagnosis or after 3 week patient is not having very high fever and you are calling him for the opd evaluation and you are doing the all the investigations and even after 3 weeks you are nowhere then it is known as pyrexia of unknown origin so in the during this 3 weeks of opd or one week of inpatient evaluation this includes a thoroughly careful history and physical examination at initial lab lab assessment that is the level 1 uh, level 1 assessment now second is the direct and strict classification that is direct and strict classification one is the classical puo as i already told you the definition second is nosocomial puo third is neutropenic puo fourth is the hiv associated puo and fifth is the transplant associated puo like in the transplantation so what is nosocomial healthcare associated puo referred to hospitalized children in home infection or fever is not present or incubating on admission but develop fever at more than 38 degree centigrade on several occasions for at least one week and diagnosis is unknown for 3 days then neutropenic puo is multiple reading of more than 38 degree centigrade in a child 
with absolute neutrophil count less than 500 per cubic millimeter after at least three days of investigations, including at least 48 hours of incubations or culture. HIV associated PU include confirmed HIV positive patients with fever as above 38 degrees centigrade for three weeks as outpatients and more than one week as inpatient. A few holes should be differentiated from fever without localizing signs, that is FWLS as differential diagnosis. So fever without localizing uh, signs in children below 36 months with history of acute onset of short duration of fever that is less than one week is only presenting complaint without uh, any sign, so, uh, sign and symptoms of localizing to any organ system. Then children with uh, fever with localizing sign usually need emergency evaluation and uh, um, empiric therapy, whereas PUO generally do not need any emergency assessment and empiric. Priyanka, please, please, Priyanka, volume thoda sa. Now, uh, we will learn about the etiology. What is the etiology? Fever of unknown origin is usually an uncommon presentation of a common illness. This is the most important line. Priyanka, please, volume, come kardo. Fever of unknown origin is usually an uncommon presentation of a common illness. The causes are subdivided into four categories. Number one is infectious disease. That is the 40 to 60%. Second is the autoimmune diseases, that is 10 to 20%. Third is the malignancies and fourth is miscellaneous. So children younger than six years are most likely to have FUO resulting from an infection. Autoimmune disease start to become more common after six years. Although infections remain the most frequent cause of the FUO and most common among infants as enteric fever, malaria, pulmonary, pulmonary or extrapulmonary tuberculosis, UTI, bacterial sinusitis. Infective causes. Uh, well, first, I told you the number one is the 60% up to 50% is the infective causes. So what are the common infections? So first is the bacterial infection, that is typhoid, paratyphoid, tuberculosis, UTI, mastoiditis, chronic liver, abscess, mycoplasma, pneumonia, subdiaphragmatic abscess, bacterial sinusitis, brucellosis, pyelonephritis, bacterial endocarditis, meningococcemia, campylobacter, Lyme disease, and Listerosis. Then viral, like infectious mononucleosis, then Epstein Barr virus, HIV or AIDS, hepatitis, cytomegalovirus disease, then among the parasitics, parasitic infections, malaria, Kalazar, amoebic abscess, hepatitis, then uh, amoebiasis, giardiasis, toxoplasmosis, trypanosomiasis, and visceral larva migraines. So these are all among the infective causes. Then less common are the spirochetal like leptospirosis or a, a relapsing fever syphilis. Then rickettsial are the scrub typhus, Q fever, Rocky Mountain, spotted fever. Then fungal is the disseminated candiasis, stoplasmosis, aspergillosis, and blastomycosis, and disseminated coccidemycosis and cryptococcus. Then connective tissue and autoimmune disorders. After infection, second number commonest is the connective tissue and autoimmune disorders. That has a SLE, a systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis, rheumatic fever, juvenile dermatomyositis, then chronic active hepatitis, then polyarthritis neurosa, Kawasaki disease, Behcet's disease, mixed connective tissue disorder, 
autoimmune and thyroiditis uh, uh, and ibs diseases etc so hyper uh, then next is the hypersensitivity disorders like drug fever then uh, serum sickness hypersensitivity pneumonitis webers uh, christian disease then malignancies are hodgkins disease neuroblastoma leukemia lymphoma inflammation inflammatory pseudo tumors and pheochromocytoma wilms tumor then endocrine causes addison's disease thyrotoxicosis hypothalamus central fever and diabetes insipidus now granulomatous disorders they uh, sarcoidosis granulomatosis and hepatitis uh, inflammatory bowel disease then familial and hereditary syndromes like familial dysauto uh, autonomia familial mediterranean uh, mediterranean fever like the fmf it is also called like fmf it is common in the mediterranean area then anti uh, and high drop tumor dysplasia and ichthyosis and hypertriglyceridemia then hematological causes you know they are hem hemophagocytic lymphoid histiocytes that is chelic syndrome and cyclic neutropenia immunodeficiencies states and castem disease castelman disease then miscellaneous are factitious fever pancreatitis poisonings thrombophlebitis pulmonary emboli and drug fever so today i have only enumerated as we cannot go in one lecture the all this uh, uh, details of the disease the disease you are going to learn or you are also have learned about some diseases already in the infectious disease chapters so how to approach now this now we you have labeled you know the causes also in the mind but you are not able to diagnose it after the three weeks of the opd or one week of the ipd investigations now approach to diagnosis first step is identify sick patients and his stabilization and urgent referral to the tertiary care center if the patient is very sick then you have to identify the patient needs hospitalization or not or even hospitalization that is requires icu or not a patient is very sick then evaluation of uh, fuo is generally on opd is not very sick then evaluation of is generally on the opd basis so what you will do on the opd basis a detailed history which includes where and how fever was documented that means onset now onset means this may be acute if all, uh, acute onset you get the history the most probable causes may be measles mumps sinusitis if the onset is insidious then it can be typhoid or cancers if it is um, intensity is low now then you have to uh, measure the intensity also you have to take an into account intensity is low then it can be tuberculosis hiv sinusitis or diphtheria but if the fever is of high intensity it can be dengue malaria or typhoid if it is the um, then you have to uh, take the duration of the fever also if it is short duration then it can be malaria dengue measles or chicken pox but it is of long duration then it can be brucella rheumatic fever malignancy frequently uh, frequently and pet then frequency and pattern next so these all things you have to uh, take the history about the fever in the detail then frequency and pattern of fever to distinguish it from the recurrent fever now patterns of the fever as you know uh, that i have drawn on the board also that it is the remittent fever intermittent fever undulating fever cyclic fever and fever with uh, chills and rigors and relapsing fever so these are the patterns of the fever what is the remittent fever when the fever that fluctuates more than 1.5 degree fahrenheit in 24 hours without touching the normal that is it is not coming to the normal even once in 24 hours uh, it is seen in the most commonly with viruses 
and in uh, infection and some bacterial infection uh, and uh, in like endocarditis and as um, it is uh, in the lymphomas and atypical myelomas this is known as the remittent fever now what is the intermittent fever intermittent fever is the fever for several hours that touches normal for a few hours and during the day once it is at least once it is coming to the normal in the whole day or in 24 hours it is seen in malaria acute pyelonephritis then uh, local boils and uh, furuncles and uh, pyogenic infections tuberculosis calaza connective tissue tissue disorders lymphomas etc then what is continuous fever a fever that does not touch to the normal and fluctuates less than 1.5 degree fahrenheit in the day it is seen in the enteric fever bacterial and then endocarditis and viral pneumonias and brucellosis and typhus so this is just opposite of remittent fever is the continuous fever there was a fluctuation uh, was a 1.5 degree it was more than 1.5 degree but here it is less than 1.5 degree but both are not touching to the normal the undulant fever it is rising and falling fever seen in the brucellosis then what is the cyclic fever it is a very uh, pathognomonic of hodgkins disease has a typical uh, pale epstein type of fever that is the 3 to 10 days cycle of uh, febrile and a febrile periods uh, and this is hodgkins lymphoma and cyclic neutropenia and uh, aids cns disorders this can have this patients can have this cyclic fever then fever with chills and rigors it is a uh, fluctuation uh, the child is means uh, is a elder in age and he can uh, tell about the chills and rigors you can see so this fever may most probable causes malaria uti abscesses pyogenic infections and uh, this uh, um, septic tonsillitis etc the relapsing fever is with period um, during which patients are a febrile for one or more days between the febrile episodes seen in uh, vector bond diseases and these are known as the relapsing fever ये एक तो मेरे को लगता है इसका पावर भी कम रह गया अभी कितना परसेंट रह गया 